Breaking a promise is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. A broken promise creates a conflict between what we expect and what actually happens. Our brains are set up to trust and build connections, leaving us vulnerable when those connections are broken. In the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey introduces the concept of emotional bank accounts by saying this. An emotional bank account is a metaphor that describes the amount of trust that's been built up in a relationship. It's the feeling of safeness you have with another human being. Just like regular bank accounts, your interactions with others involve deposits and withdrawals. When we do something kind, honest, or helpful, we make a deposit into the emotional bank account of that relationship, and these deposits build up a reserve of goodwill and trust. In this scenario, People of integrity are rich. This is important because we humans are bound to make mistakes. No one is perfect. But with a rich emotional bank account, mistakes will not define you. Instead, they will be just a small blip in a larger pattern of positive behavior. It's like having a $1,000 problem with a $1 million reserve. So how can we build that reserve? The answer is, personal integrity. Let's learn the six steps to build the emotional bank account of integrity. The first step to build a rich emotional bank account is understanding the individual. Stephen Covey talks about the importance of listening to others we intend to understand, not reply. When we listen with the intent to reply, we impose our script into other people's lives. Whatever matters to us is embedded in that response. That's an unconscious attempt to be understood. We're using the other person's exposure of the situation to explore our own insecurities, turning the conversation about us while we cover ourselves with the mental of empathy. The first thing you need to do to be able to listen with the intent to understand instead of reply is to ask questions. Questions will keep the exploration in the field of the other person's interest and perspective. It will help them exercise their thoughts about the matter, expose their vulnerability, and update their script. You're not helping or adding value to their perspective because you think you know the answers. Because your answers mean something in your value structure, not theirs. Listen with the intent to understand instead of reply makes huge deposits in the emotional bank account of any relationship. The second step to build a rich emotional bank account is attending to the little things. In relationships, the little things are the big things. Stephen Covey talks about the power of small acts of kindness and courtesy. These small gestures may seem insignificant, but they add up over time, creating a strong foundation of trust and goodwill. And the fastest way to attend the little things and connect with someone is by trying to be interested instead of interesting. So here's a crash course on how to become an interested person. Ask more than you answer, listen more than you speak, keep eye contact, make specific compliments, and smile. The third step to build a rich emotional bank account is keeping commitments. Stephen Covey points out that breaking a promise is one of the quickest ways to lose trust. So what do you do to keep those promises or those commitments? Start by being realistic about what you can promise. You don't build trust by making promises, but by keeping them and fulfilling them. People won't be able to hear what you say if your actions are speaking louder in the opposite direction of your words. That happens because we don't see the world. What we see is just a map made of our past experiences, our personalities, and the limitation of our perception. When what actually happens around us doesn't reflect what is plotted on our maps, we feel lost. Anxiety kicks in because we're not where we thought we were. What's the immediate course of action? Getting out of there. If there is a person, not trusting that person anymore is getting out of there. 
The fourth step to building a rich emotional bank account is clarifying expectations. And the most effective way to clarify expectations is by setting clear expectations so you don't have to clarify them when a problem emerges. One of the worst case scenarios is when you spend time and energy on fulfilling a promise that has nothing to do with what the other person expects. When you promise something, be specific about what you will deliver and when. When is actually a big deal, because Christmas presents have little value when delivered in January. It's always a good idea not to assume anything. Ask questions and listen to others' expectations. Make sure you understand their needs and exactly what they expect from you. Regular check-ins are another way of to clarify expectations. Why? Because situations can evolve and expectations shift with this evolution. Touch base with people involved to make sure that everyone is still on the same page. The fifth step to building a rich emotional bank account is showing personal integrity. But what is integrity? Consider these three elements as fundamental parts of the image you project in the world. What you say, what you do, and what you believe. Now, imagine that these elements that project your image and give the world the means to have an opinion about you live in different spaces. What you say lives in one place, what you do lives in another, and what you believe lives apart from both. Integrity is the opposite situation. It's when what you say, do, and believe live in the same realm of possibilities. What's possible for one, it's also possible for the other two. To be an integral person, you do what you say because you believe in that. The sixth and last step to building a rich emotional bank account is understanding and respecting the laws of love and the laws of life. Stephen Covey tells us that when we make deposits of unconditional love, we encourage others to live by the principles of cooperation, contribution, self-discipline, and integrity. However, when you attach conditions to your love, you push others into a defensive position where they feel they must prove their worth. That's a relationship based on utility. What's the problem with that? Let's say someone is looking for a relationship based on affection. If you offer utility, meaning you want to extract something from them to your own benefit, they won't have affection from you, so they will move away. Now ask yourself, what's left? And the answer is other people like you who want to have relationships based on what you can offer. If you break the laws of love, you will end up being surrounded by people who don't care about you more than what you can offer to improve their lives and that breaks the laws of life. In The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey gives us a powerful framework of building trust and fostering meaningful relationships. Each small action, each promise kept, and each moment of understanding contributes to a rich emotional bank account that can survive life's challenges. Be the person who listens, who cares, who keeps their word, and who loves without condition. By doing so, you not only transform your own life, but you also inspire those around you to do the same. Keep making those deposits, build your emotional bank account, and watch it how it changes everything.